Hello, and welcome to Unity of Las Vegas. My name is Jim Lee, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Well, I just want you to know that you're not here by accident. You're here on official business, on purpose, by divine appointment. And just breathe that in because this is a ministry of love, in love, with love. In fact, I would say our theme is there is a power within you called love that is always greater than any condition before you. Breathe that in and let that be your affirmation for today. Well, today we have an interesting talk. I want to push the envelope once again just a little bit. The title of this talk is Hearing the Call of Love in Times of Crisis. Subtitle, Authoring the Impossible. Well, today we have our typical three M's. We have the music. It's original music by John Jones. And he came up with the talk title, I mean the music title of Authoring the Impossible, which is the talk title. Then I'll be delivering a message. And then, of course, we've got the wonderful and the talented Lisa that will bring it all home together in a meditation. So thank you for joining us. And let's, let's get ready for a fabulous time together. Hi, friends. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. In case you haven't heard it from anyone else, let me be the first to tell you that we love you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in each one of you. You might have seen that we're building a collection of Posse Music videos in a separate playlist here on our YouTube channel, Sunday Experience Posse Music Playlist. Go take a look, take a listen, and feel free to share your favorites on your own social sites like Facebook or Twitter. Each one of you is an author of the impossible, the mystical nature of all life itself. The very breath of God from within your soul springs forth from your heart as well. I hope you enjoy this song entitled, Author of the Impossible. It's 
Thank you, John Jones, once again. Love the title, Authoring the Impossible. In fact, that's consistent with my talk title. Hearing the call of love in times of crisis, Authoring the Impossible. Yes, that's right. In times of crisis, I say that it's really a call for love and something can happen that you didn't think was possible to happen, I'm going to call it the impossible, if we bring in love in times of crisis. A religious historian and someone that I'm just getting to know rather well recently, his name is Jeffrey Kerpal. And he has this quote that I like, and it is, it is my hope that mystical events become real-world invitations to become our own authors of the impossible. Yes, authors of the impossible. The impossible things can happen. I think it was like 1996. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, my first church summer in New York, Everything was going good, and I happened to do a wedding in July, but it happened to be one of the hottest weeks in New York. It was like 95 degrees, and I know, I know, here in Las Vegas, you say 95 is nothing. But when it's 95 and 90% humidity, trust me, that's hot. Well, I got to the church, turned on the air conditioning, and Everything was all set. The groom arrived a little early, and he was all set and ready to go along with his six groomsmen, and everything was good until we got the phone call said that the bride was going to be 45 minutes late. Well, it's no problem, except she was really an hour and a half late. In between time, the groom along with his six groomsmen, during this period of time, decided that they were just going to relax. They pulled out the bottles of champagne that they had stored, and there is an interesting chemical transaction that took place. One, when you have an empty stomach. Two, you put... I would say liquid refreshments of alcohol in your stomach. And then the other thing, it's 95 degrees. Well, within a period of time, they were all wasted, but the groom was really gone. And at that time, wouldn't you know it, the bride arrives. So I usher her in and I say, you know, he's, not doing well. He's been drinking and he's all over the place. She said, 
he would get it together. And I'm thinking, I don't know about this. And so I said, okay, let's pray about it. And I said, I want you to send all your love to him. Also, I want you to visualize him standing tall and being able to do this service. One reason why I asked her to do this is I couldn't hold in my vision that he was going to be able to pull this off. Because the last time I saw him, he was out flat, not even budging. So I said, okay. We prayed. I went back, and it was so interesting. The um, His groomsmen were huddled around him. It reminded me, in, like in a boxing match, then in the ring, the guy's in the corner, and he's got all the, the people working on him, fanning him, giving him water and all that. That's what they were doing to him. One guy was throwing water on him, drenching his face. Another person was trying to give him coffee, and another person was trying to pat him down. And then we stood him up. I said, can you see? He said, yeah, but he didn't have his eyes open. Well, can you walk? And he said, yes. He took one step and he threw up. I said, okay, this is not going to work. But I remember now she's saying she wants to do this wedding and the place was packed. So I took a deep breath. All right, let's figure out how to do this. So the best man said, I am going to have right here a bag, a trash bag, and if he throws up, I'll catch it. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. So we walked down the aisle. I have him on one arm, and I'm carrying him. The best man has him on the other arm, so he's walking like this down the aisle, I have my Bible, and the best man has the garbage bag. So we're ready. So we finally get up to the altar, turn him around, and he's kind of wobbling. I said, you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm all right. And then the music came on. Dun, 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 dun. The doors open, and all of a sudden, he stood up straight. All of a sudden, his eyes got clear. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this could work. But I'm still thinking, I don't know if this is possible. We still haven't got to the vows. When we got to the vows, he said everything clearly. And when he said, I do, the whole place erupted. Everybody knew that an impossible situation had turned into something possible. This was my Brooklyn wedding. Well, this is an indication that there's some things that science can't explain. There is this realm that we were called impossible, but is it really? What I'm saying now, the possible is always available, and especially in times of crisis, and especially if we call on love. And what I'm saying is, that's available right here and now. Jeffrey says there was a cultural war that happened in the past. He's a cultural religious historian. And he said that science, I would call it the church and spiritualism were going at it at one particular time to see who would be in charge. Well, the church with its dogma and its rigid religious beliefs gave way to the spiritual movement and the spiritual movement was really good and the spiritualism, but also came out of that was a scientific movement that really analyzed everything and it allowed us to really grow in what we are today. However, in the competition, science started to poo-poo spiritualism or what we call the paranormal in that it wasn't really real. And in fact, it got labeled as 
foo-foo and woo-woo, and, and it, it was discounted. And this paranormal that was separated out is still regarded today as woo-woo. And when you start talking about making things possible out of the impossible, people's eyes will glaze over. But that's not how it used to be. But I can understand how it can be because there's a lot of things going on out there. If you remember back in um, the 1990s, there was a, a thing called the Psychic Hotline. And uh, it was a lady by the name of Miss Cleo. Uh, boy, they made a fortune. I don't know if she made the fortune, but the Psychic Hotline did until the FBI closed them down. It found out that, you know, they had all of these scripts that they were giving to people and that they weren't really real readings. There's some charlatans out there, and what has happened is this paranormal, this impossibility consciousness that's, that's out there has been poo-pooed and thrown, they've thrown out the baby with the bathwater. And I'm saying, hold on. Yeah, there's some Charlottes out there. But let's hold on to the baby for a moment. And let's see what's happening. What And what is happening now, science is starting to take a look at consciousness, the paranormal now, as having some reality, when, especially when they've gotten into quantum physics and they noticed that when you see something on the subatomic level, that it actually changed from a wave to a particle, that our consciousness actually interacts with the invisible and causes something that was previously a wave, turns into a particle, and we have an impact. So let's get this baby back and let's take a look at the spiritual influences here. So if a scientist had gone to that wedding, they probably would have said, there's no way he can walk and be able to do that service. Well, I just want you to know, in this very moment, there are infinite possibilities. What are we going to align with determines which one of those possibilities start to manifest. The paranormal, quote unquote, is really real and we can be open to it. In fact, it happens all the time. There are people right now, and I know some of you are there, that, that have had these moments in which, you know what, I'm thinking about somebody, and you give them a call, and they were saying, I was thinking of you last week. See that? Science can't explain that. I'll give you another example. Uh, okay, so I'm in Brooklyn after this, and Unity Village calls me, and I, I go to Unity as a chaplain. That was really good. And while I was there, Marianne Williamson came to Unity Village, and then that was really good. That would just happen to great, some people call it accident or a coincidence, and we meet. But then she takes me to Detroit, and then I become her associate minister. That was really good. But there's something that happened as I met Lisa along the way. So each one of these things happened in such a way that that occurred. Was that an accident? Is that a coincidence? No. See, when you get into spirituality, we say, no, that serendipity, there's something that is occurring when you open up to love that would not occur ordinarily. What I'm saying is something is always possible, even though you may claim it impossible. We have what we call intuition that some of us use. It's not that weird. Matter of fact, our very own president of the board, uh, Ira, really takes a moment all the time and he says, you know, I'm going to check in for guidance. He doesn't go to the intellect. He doesn't go to reason. He 
taps into something else, and I call it consciousness. We all have experienced it at some point or another, but because we've been taught to poo-poo it, that it's full of woo-woo, that it's no substance to it, we don't even say it. We don't even believe it. We don't even claim it, and we don't even act on it. So what I am now incorporating is that all of this now has validity, and especially now when we look at the new science that is verifying this more and more, the things that are going on. In this new way of being, we can open ourselves up to love in all kinds of moments and tap into something that's beyond this three-dimensional reality, we then tap into our imagination. Our imagination connects to one of these variables that is so real and we connect with it that it then brings it into reality because our thoughts are things, and if we think it and resonate with it, it becomes a thought in our mind, and our thought in our mind then projects it out. Albert Einstein says, imagination is more important than knowledge. We live in a universe where everything is existing at various rates and various vibrations and various frequencies. And just want you to know that where our thoughts go and where our love energy goes, that there's something happens as an energy connection that it then starts to bring into reality that which is focused in on. And it's beyond the conditional thought. So if we are able to imagine, it is way more important than any particular kind of knowledge. It accesses a domain. Some people call it the paranormal. I call it consciousness. And something happens. A, a miracle happens. In fact, that is real manifestation. When our energy and love connects with the conditions that are going on, instead of bringing lack, limitation, fear to the situation, we let the crisis call out for us and we bring love to it, our heart to it. In that moment, something happens. The impossible now becomes possible. And now, how does it get there? I want to flip a scripture on you that I think you all know. And it's from Matthew 3rd chapter and verses 1 through 3. It says, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, for many of us, repentance is is one of these slippery words that has really lost its original meaning. For some, repentance is something that you do after you've done something bad, and somebody will start saying, oh, I'm so sorry, and you, matter of fact, what I can see, picture now, is some minister on TV crying because he was inappropriate in some kind of way, and he got caught. So now he's repenting. That's one form of repentance. That's not what I'm talking about. There's another one is some people at the end of the year, they say, oh, I'm going to turn away from my old ways and I'm going to turn over a new leaf for the beginning of the year. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not quite sure. And as a matter of fact, I know John the Baptist wasn't talking about that. And in the book of Matthew, it really is taking a look at not only are we turning away, but repent is really is turning toward, turning toward God, turning towards love, turning towards what is ready to emerge. It says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we're turning toward what is right now impossible, right now is invisible. We're turning toward that, and we're setting up a condition for vibration to connect with that. 
This is our new way. So what I am saying, in this crisis, or any condition that you're having in your life now, there is available to us in this very moment to turn towards it, bring love into it, open up to a new paradigm that is in existence right now, but it takes us to collaborate and cooperate with it to bring it into this three-dimensional world. Turn to love. And what will happen, we'll have an imagination and we'll have a vision. In the midst of defeat, something can happen. We'll have an imagination and a vision in the midst of forgiveness. In, and then it can remove guilt. We can have, I would call it, just in the midst of despair, we can have hope in the midst of any kind of situation that seems oppressive, we can have life. This is who we are. Open up now, call out the love in the midst of a crisis. Let's make, in our lifetime, the impossible possible. Love is the way. And now Lisa will take us the rest of the way. So what we're really doing here as cosmic beings is authoring the impossible. With this term, Jeffrey Kripal, a religious historian, makes a case for the validity of the paranormal, extrasensory phenomena experienced beyond the five senses. Now words and terms are problematic here, but those of us on a path of awakening might wish to refer to these as spiritual or mystical experiences. I've actually totally fallen in love with this term, authors of the impossible. At the highest level, authors engage others in the sacred act of making something from the spiritual realm visible that was previously invisible. The sacred act also of inviting others directly into the living creative process. And it also speaks to the human capacity of being able to live in two realms simultaneously, the imaginal realm and the 3D realm, this ability to be cosmic midwives. What we have access to in the realm of the paranormal, however, can seem to be impossible to the intellect. So back in the early 90s, my oldest daughter, Crystal, had brain surgery and had been in a coma for almost two months. One night, I returned home from a long stretch at the hospital and went to bed. At about 2 a.m. or so, I was met with a vivid experience of my daughter's presence. Here, she was fully conscious and she seemed to want to share with me what it was like for her being in this coma. So part of the time I was standing by her and we were both looking at her in the hospital bed. And at other points, I was the one in the bed with all the tubes running down my throat. This was a profoundly intense and intimate experience with my daughter. There was a vibrancy of colors and an aliveness of the space and emotions. Now, this might have been totally overwhelming for me, but it was balanced beautifully by her natural sense of humor and playfulness. So after this experience, I woke up subtly sitting straight up in bed. Now, while I could have rationalized it away by saying it was just an interesting dream, it was clear to me that it was much more than that. There was something undeniably real and true about it. And later I found out from the hospital staff that all of Crystal's physical stats dropped unexplainably for 20 minutes. And then around 2 a.m. that night, they unexplainably again went back up. So that night for me, the impossible became possible. 
Orlin Bishop, a modern day sage and mystic says, the human imaginal realm includes phenomenon far more powerful than the mind. Imagination is not a mental activity alone. It is the use of archetypal powers in the collective field far beyond our civilization's finite space and time. And because the imaginal realm transcends the mind or the intellect, manifesting the impossible is not only possible, but necessary to bringing forth a new way of being together on the planet. Orlin goes on to speak of this archetypal power within the consciousness, within the collective, in the context of an earth that is ever evolving and learning, a living entity with a body and a soul. It is always in the process of learning about its mineral nature, its plant nature, and through us it is learning how to be human. In this view, nothing is ever lost. The memories of each life, each human life, are a permanent part of the soul of the earth, creating a beautiful feedback loop of wisdom, a rich resource for us ever available, always informing us of our rich evolutionary heritage and the possibilities for the future. So coming from here, let's take this into meditation. So I invite you now just to bring attention to your breath and just begin to take gentle breaths in and out. And just allow this beautiful breath to bring harmony to all the magnificence of yourself as a human being. Bringing harmony to your physical body feeling more centered in your mind and in your emotions and feeling connected with the realm of spirit, your most expanded part of self. And now I invite you just to bring attention to your heart and sense into your beautiful heart energy. And notice as you are focusing on this heart energy that it begins to fill your entire being. So just allow all that you are to be filled with the magnificence and beauty and love that is in this heart energy. And now imagine this heart energy being enfolded by the heart of the earth. Sensing into the magnificence of her heart energy, the largeness, the interpenetrating quality, the embracing quality. Sense into how it is permeating her being, her soul force. And now sense into the living moving, breathing quality of her geosphere, her mineral life. And since this part of her being as alive and vibrant, moving and evolving, And now sent into the li living, moving, breathing quality of her biosphere. The plants, the animals. And sensing into this part of her being as being part of the evolutionary impulse. Alive. Relationality. And now sent into the living, moving, breathing quality of her humanity. Of all the humans who have come before. 
all of their achievements, all of their shortcomings. Sense into how each aspect of being a human is held in her memory, in her heart memory, in the memory of her soul. And feel the fullness of the capacity of what it is to be a human being that is captured there. Sense into the past, the present, and the future of the magnificence of being human, alive in her soul. Continue to breathe in this liveness of humanity within the earth and the earth within humanity. Feeling yourself in profound connectivity with this breathing quality of the earth and the human. And allow this awareness to become a lens through which you see the universe, breathing in and out, and just take a moment now through this particular lens of profound connectivity and wisdom to add your blessing to the world and to the universe. Rumi says, in this earth, in this immaculate field, we shall not plant any seeds except for compassion, except for love. So in this moment, plant these beautiful seeds from your heart to the heart of the earth and the heart of the universe. For this is the way it really is. Inside of this beautiful connectivity of the union of you and the earth and the universe inside the magnificence of this heart energy. Allow this to be your lens through which you bless everything that you look upon this week. Thank you for joining me in this magnificent vision. And so it is. Thank you, Lisa. I love the Rumi quote. In this earth, in this immaculate field, we shall not plant any seed except for compassion and except for love. I love that. So thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. But also, I just want you to know that you can join us right after this service for our special fellowship time. And so you can just go on our website, be able to get the instructions to get there. Also, it's in our chat session as well. This has been a good day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And so allow this energy now and this possibility that you can bring the impossible forward into your life now. So if this touched you just Hey, just share it with somebody. Share it with a friend and all of that. And also, if this ministry is affecting you in any kind of way, a couple of things I'd like for you to do is is to pray and support us with your loving energy. Hey, keep us open so that we can keep on doing the impossible. And also, 
contribute financially. You can do it via our website. You can do it via the phone. Whatever you do, just want you to know it is a lovingly accepted in this ministry. So we're going to close out now with our famous prayer. It's called the prayer for protection. It is for you. It is for your family and your friends. Also, it's for our entire world. So if you would, breathe in and repeat after me. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is there. And all is well. God bless you. See you next week. You are an author of the impossible. The living, breathing creation itself. You are an author of the impossible. The living, breathing creation itself. The unseen realm from which the world will flow with the grace of spirit as well. You are an author of the impossible, mystical nature of all life itself. The breath of God from within your soul springs forth from your heart.